Hi, in this video we're going to have a look at the new depth map tool that was added in Resolve 18. This tool allows you to create a depth map of your video. Using this, you can selectively apply effects to the foreground or background of your video without doing any kind of tracking or masking. This tool is only available in the paid version of Resolve since it uses a neural engine that is only available in the studio version of the app. Before we get to the main topic here, I just wanted to point one thing out. A number of folks have stated that I speak too slowly, but that's by design. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And in conclusion, Jim, Bill, Bob, call Fred, load, dork, eight up and ten. Business is business, and as we all know, in order to get something done, you gotta do something. In order to do something, we gotta get to work, so let's get to work. Thank you for taking me. A large number of my viewers that come to this channel are not speaking English as their first language. As such, I make a concerted effort to speak slowly and clearly so that they can understand me easily. If the speed with which I present these videos is too slow for you, then I recommend you take advantage of the playback speed control that YouTube has just like this. Okay, on to the depth map tool. It tends to work best with video that has some distance between the background and foreground elements. But as we'll see, it can still be used in a more cramped space, just as with the Magic Mask tool, contrast between the foreground and background will help the system generate the map. Hair, human or otherwise, can present some challenges as we'll see at the end of the video. Returning to my Jeep B-roll that I used in the masking video, this clip has pretty good contrast in it, so it should be a good candidate for the depth map tool. It also has good separation between the horizon and the subject as well. So what exactly does the depth map do? It calculates what's in the foreground and what's in the background of your shot. When we look at the depth map itself, we can see that closer objects are whiter and the ones further away get darker until they get to black. I'll play the clip here so you can see what it looks like before we make our changes like this. I'm going to add a Jeep logo to the shot and have it animated across the beach. And our goal is to have the Jeep pass in front of the logo instead of behind it. We'll do this without masking or using fusion or even the color page for that matter. Going into my media pool, I'll grab this Jeep logo and put it on the top track, video track in the timeline like this. I'll set its length like so. I can turn off the media pool now since I'm done with it. The Jeep logo is too large, so I'll open the inspector window so I can scale the logo. I'll also move it so it's more aligned along the horizon and then I'll move it off the screen to the right like this and then we can animate it going across the screen. I'll keyframe its starting position. Now we can scrub the clip over to, oh, let's say right about here or so. And now I'll adjust the X position to put our logo over on the left side of the frame which will automatically create our ending keyframe. Now, when we play this back, the logo animates across the clip in front of our vehicle. Our goal here is to make the logo pass behind the vehicle and the depth map tool is what will get us to that point. In the track list, there is a hierarchy of the elements in the tracks. Whatever is placed on the highest track is what will be seen unless there is transparency or an alpha channel in one of the elements. For example, the Jeep logo is a PNG file with a transparent background so we can see the clip beneath it, but the Jeep logo stays on top since it gets priority on the higher track. Ultimately, what we'll do is create a depth map on the video clip that will create transparency for us so that we can see the elements in the lower track, but they'll appear behind the topmost track. So I'll duplicate the clip on the bottom track up to the top with option drag on the Mac or alt drag on Windows. Now if we play it back, the topmost track is all that's visible. The logo and bottom clip tracks are obscured by the top track. Now we'll make the background of the top clip transparent so the bottom clip and the logo will show through. Here's where we apply the depth map effect to our topmost clip. We open up the effects panel and choose the open effects category at the top here. I'll just search for DEP and there we go. I drag the effect to the top clip and now I can close the effects panel since we're done with it. 
I'll zoom in on the timeline a bit here using Option Plus on the Mac and Shift Plus on Windows. Now you can see that the depth map has started to render. In the inspector window that I still have open, I'll click the effects and we can see the depth map controls are here. It's set to better. I'll set it to faster so my machine will remain responsive. This effect is very compute intensive, so you need to be patient with it while it makes its calculations. You can turn the preview on and off and it defaults to on so I could turn it off and see the final result in the viewer. Our Jeep logo is still on top so we need to adjust the parameters of the effect. I arrived at these values by trial and error and as I gain a better understanding of these settings I'll make a follow-up video that covers their effects in more detail. We'll turn on adjust map levels first and set its values. There's a far limit, near limit, and gamma setting. I'll leave gamma alone, but I'll set the far limit value to be 0.124. I'll set the near limit to 0.349. Now you can see we have a more extreme separation between the black and the white. The black, again, represents transparency. Our Jeep is whiter, keeping it opaque, but it needs to be a good solid white for this to work. Our next setting is isolation, so we enable that. I'll set the target depth to 0.721. I'll set the tolerance to 0.604. And finally, I'll set the softness to zero. Our final section is post-processing, so I'll enable that. For the expand and contract, I'll set that to minus for contract and a value of 0.457. I'll leave the blur at zero and the post filter at 0.5, which are their default values. Returning to the top of the settings, I'll turn off the preview like this. We can see the word Jeep is now being obscured by the vehicle just as we wanted. This will take a moment to render. I'll go back to the first frame and in a moment we'll play it and see how well it did for us. The values that I put into the settings were, as previously indicated, a result of trial and error, and in the interest of brevity, I did not want to waste a lot of time in this video fiddling with the values experimentally. Okay, we are rendered. Let's have a look at our results. And there it is. And we did all of this without tracking or using a power window on the color page or using Fusion. It was all done on the edit page. Very slick. Now, let's look at another shot that I did with this breakdancer. As you can see, he's in a room where he's in close proximity to the background, so the depth map does not have a lot of area to work with. The result of this is that the dancer now intersects with the text at certain points in the dance routine. It's not horrible, and certainly this might be usable and acceptable for what you're doing when presented with this kind of limitation. Some additional finessing of the settings might improve it, but this is as good as I was able to get it. For our final sample here, I'll use this horse on the beach shot again as I did in the masking video. And for this example, I just wanted to point out you don't have to limit yourself to a logo or text as I used in the previous two examples. This example contains just the clip duplicated on two tracks like this. Right now I have the bottom track turned off so you can see the transparent black area of the depth map. On this bottom clip, I have a lens blur effect added to it so I can produce a kind of fake depth of field effect to the shot. Back on the top clip, I have the depth map and I can turn the preview on and off so you can see the map like so. I did this pretty quickly, so I'm sure it could be finessed further to get a more refined result. I'll turn on that bottom layer and we can see that the background has a blur effect added to it. If I turn the blur effect on the bottom track on and off, you can see the difference that it makes. As previously stated, I can refine the map more and get a more refined result. You can see that it struggles with hair here. You can add any effect to that bottom track's clip and get that to be applied to the background of the shot. For example, I'll go to the color page and select the bottom clip and tweak the overall hue of it towards a more blue look like so. Again, you can add whatever effect strikes your fancy to that clip. 
Don't be afraid to just dive into the depth map settings and play around with them and see what they do. Make sure you check the depth map at different points in your clip as it will vary over time. Okay, that's it for this video. If you liked the video, please click like as that helps other folks find the video. Thanks so much for stopping by and watching this and until the next video, take care.